Hi, folks. Uh, excited to be kicking off this event. Uh, Dito is a good friend of mine who we met um, a while back in Portland. Um, and I'm just going to live dangerously and uh, jump right into demos. So why do we start Puma and why, why are we building Puma? Uh, if you, let me start screen sharing. Um, at one point, uh, a few years ago, I noticed that if you go in Safari um, to, let's say, apple.com, and you request a desktop website, uh, you're going to get the same website. It's pretty annoying. Um, and in Puma, if you request a desktop website, you're going to get a real desktop website. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, similar to Ditto's story, uh, I, come from, I come from developer platforms. Uh, I used to work at Meteor. I used to work at Cloud and Databases Service Company, Parse. Um, and so a lot of problems I look for um, from a lens of uh, developers and how can we um, build more fun things and how can we enable more people to be more productive. And um, I got to know about Bitcoin early on in 2012 and then back into ecosystem in about 2017, 18 through a host of events hosted by folks at the Ethereum uh, conferences at San Francisco is probably one of the biggest fun events uh, where it was so nice to uh, get to know the community and see what people are building um, and the one thing that uh, that always struck me is that at the time, very few people were talking about interoperability. At the time, very few people were talking about uh, bringing different crypto communities together. Um, and parallel to that, there was a lot of conversation on privacy uh, online. How do you make a living online? And so to me, all those things um, came nicely together in a very simple idea. Um, let's build a browser that's uh, one, uh, is truly customer focused. Uh, historically, uh, most of the uh, online content and browsers are monetized through advertising or advertising business model. Um, and in the Web3 world, in this new uh, world of peer to peer sharing economy, uh, I think we have an opportunity to build uh, a much better business model where uh, people are paying for content or apps or services and earning nice uh, living doing so. Um, and then the second one was, can we make a lot of uh, crypto projects and Web3 projects really easy to use uh, natively in the browser? And can we have the browser that is private by design, uh, private by design of the business model where we focus on you and our goal is to make it easy for you to use uh, either micropayments or uh, some of the other projects that I'll demo in a second. Um, and uh, that seems like a much nicer business model for uh, for a long term. And then it's also just an experiment. Uh, I'm a developer. A lot of people attending this conference are developers. And so uh, just like the desktop website view, uh, at the time, also two years ago when we started, uh, dark themes were not the default. And so we were one of the first browsers to have dark theme by default. Uh, now everybody has it and we're kind of getting tired of it. Um, but it's really exciting to experiment. Uh, browsers your window into the internet. And we think it's a really important uh, project. And, and we're excited to one, see a lot of talks later today uh, from folks from different projects. And two, let me demo a few things. So first of all, everything uh, about Puma, you can find out at uh, pumabrowser.com. The project that uh, was foundational to making micropayments happen and making interoperability happen in our case is Interledger. You can find it at interledger.org. And one of the applications of uh, Interledger protocol is web monetization. Um, it's a simple JavaScript API that allows you to stream uh, packets of payments to a website and for a website to react uh, to those payments. And Uchi uh, later today is gonna do a deeper presentation about it. Um, but to me, the, uh, the really exciting part of it is that uh, when you have a uh, kind of like account and a balance in the browser, in, in case uh, of us, it's a, a coil partnership where you sign up for a subscription um, you get to see, and you go to a website, you get to see this flow of events uh, coming into the site. Um, and uh, uh, it's a really simple JavaScript API, which uh, is very welcome to web developers. And so we're really excited to see uh, what you'll build with it. Uh, and in response to this, this different sites um, can choose to react differently. There's a game uh, called Sushi Party um, that will show you no ads while you're playing a game. Uh, if you're a paying customer and it will show you ads, if you prefer a free experience. Um, Flat Escape is another fun game. Um, and then one of the really fun features is that um, you can have a paywall unlock uh, automatically for you once you're reading a site. 
Um, and this is a demo post to make it really short because oftentimes when you scroll down um, really fast, you want to be able to even see the unlocking animation, but that's all it takes for a site to recognize that, hey, you are actually a paying subscriber and we're going to unlock content for you without ads, without any tracking. I think this is a really uh, powerful method. And then uh, another thing that uh, Tishan later today is going to talk about is Handshake and uh, as an alternative to TLDs. Um, and we are the first browser to natively support Handshake. Uh, today it's all down through gateways for working on uh, making kind of native resolution uh, through having a light client in the browser, but today it goes through uh, gateways. Uh, but this allows you to have a top level domain like this uh, where uh, you can just have Tishan or uh, Casey is one of the community members or uh, Nicole is one of the early community members. Uh, so it's really nice to have uh, your own domain like that. And you can have a lot of fun with it. There's one project called Flamingo Handshake, which has uh, Flamingo Handshake as their TLD, which I think is super fun uh, and really exciting. We also have a preview of ENS uh, starting to work in the browser. Last but not least from the demo part, um, well, obviously Hackathon 3000, really excited to be part of it. Uh, really excited to see what you build. Please reach out in Discord uh, if you have any questions or uh, if you're building something uh, related to either web monetization, interledger, or uh, handshake, and be happy to uh, check it out and see how, how well it works in Puma. And then last but not least, uh, this is a preview of uh, IPFS support natively in Puma. And um, this is uh, one of the tests that developers use to uh, check how it's working. and um, as you can see, uh, this, this is working still early. Not all the features are supported, um, but uh, it's really exciting to start supporting IPFS natively in Puma. And um, today, uh, you can select your favorite gateways here. So in the settings, uh, you, you have a list of uh, all the gateways. And uh, earlier, uh, earlier today, some of the things weren't working, but depending on different gateways, sometimes it takes a little bit more time uh, to resolve certain addresses. Um, and uh, we're really excited to launch this and uh, be part of this ecosystem. Uh, we're just getting started. We're uh, a very small team. We're remote first, and uh, our goals are to bring uh, support for all the great Web3 projects uh, natively in the browser, and how can we onboard the next uh, billion people to this great peer-to-peer uh, -peer sharing economy uh, rather than the business model of ads and tracking. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Oh, sorry, Hackathon, and uh, join us in this journey. Thank you.